Every time I see a performance, I enjoy it so much, I want to be up there. My most memorable theater moment would have to be the first time I saw Beauty and the Beast and, and watched the magic that they did on stage. When I saw Rent for the first time. I was at the debut of Dreamgirls when Jennifer Holliday came out and started singing. You can kind of hear the rustle of the audience and the orchestra tuning up. I melted. It was amazing. It was like the first rock concert I ever went to. I was so in love with everything that was happening, with every note in the score. Just absolutely incredible, it blew my mind. But I do remember being extremely excited. I had to go see it again and again and again after that. It was just a feeling in my gut and a fire in me that really just, I wanted to be up on that stage. I remember seeing Beauty and the Beast for the first time as a movie. And I remember thinking to myself, this is a fabulous movie. When the film first premiered some 20 years ago, it was said that the best musical on Broadway was actually in the movie theaters with Disney's Beauty and the Beast. So it wasn't really um, that surprising the stage adaptation would follow. When I first saw the movie of Beauty and the Beast, it just screams stage. It's a larger than life story. It's very romantic. Um, it, it is very theatrical in its, in its concept. Numbers like Gaston and Be Our Guest are basically written to be big stage numbers. And it just fit, it just worked. When I saw what Rob Roth had actually come up with, with the sets and the, the, with the adaptation that Linda Wilverton was working on, and, and then Tim Rice and I, of course, wrote new songs. It, it was a whole experience that I never anticipated. The biggest challenge in changing Beauty and the Beast into stage musical was the challenge of the objects. How do we allow actors to play these objects? Turning into a physical production it was all very, very challenging. It was the first production I remember being so blown away at the amount of people on stage and forks and knives and plates. The way that they did that production, it, it was just as magical and beautiful as when you watch it in the movie. It was immediately a success, uh, earning Tony Awards, several Tony nominations, and again has become one of the longest running shows in Broadway history. The feeling I get before I step onto a stage, especially on opening night in a theater show, it's a combination of adrenaline and excitement. You know that right when you step on stage, you're gonna be a completely different person. You have that adrenaline pumping, pumping. I gotta tell you, I was so nervous. You feel your heart beating in the back of your neck. It's such a sense of accomplishment when you finish a show. You can sigh, take a deep breath, look around you, there's your castmates. The audience wants to applaud and give me their love. I mean, after that, I was, just had the butterflies and excitement every night because this was what I worked so hard for, for so many years. You're on stage and you create this little world that you're in and the audience gets to peek into that world. Being able to play a fairy tale princess night after night in the way that only Disney can do it, I mean, you literally on stage feel like you're in that world. The little girl in you is getting to be a princess, <laughs> you know, every day of the week. It's Who gets to do that? It's an honor to have been a part of it and to have it be one of the major things that shaped me as an artist and a musician um, is, is a really cool thing. I always loved theater. I loved being on stage. Any chance I could get to do a talent show, a community theater production, anything at all. Dance on a tabletop. I didn't care. I was there. Music was such an important part of the Osmonds growing up. I mean, I can't remember a day when there wasn't music in our lives. I grew up in a very musical home. And, and so music was always around, and I definitely knew it was something that I wanted to do. I was really young when I started being interested in theater. They brought a musical theater class into the dancing school that I was in, and I was hooked. I didn't do my first musical until I was in high school. And I just remember being so excited and just had such a good time and was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've waited this long to be in my first musical. Les Miserables was my first Broadway experience and there were a lot of skeptics because I was coming from the pop world even though they didn't realize my whole childhood was spent in the theater. I came back to Broadway in 1997 to do Beauty and the Beast and did a nine month run which was incredible. Before I made a commitment to jump into theater, I was known for being a television artist, a recording artist, concert artist, but I never really was a theatrical artist. I remember getting a call one day from Tom Schumacher, head of Disney Entertainment, 
uh, and Mark Rosano, executive producer of Beauty and the Beast. And they said, we want you to be in Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm confused. What part? Okay, I, I'm too short to play the Beast, and I don't really have biceps to spare as Gaston. Maybe they want me to play Belle in drag or something. I, I don't know. But they said, no, Gaston is the role we'd like you to play. And I think, okay, I really don't have the, the physique for Gaston. And he said, well, we have technologies to fix that. <laughs> so I remember thinking, you know, I'm the kind of artist that loves a challenge. You know, give me a challenge, let me tackle it and see if I can do it. So I thought, this is perfect. If I can pull this one off, it's perfect. So I accepted. The goal for me was to, to do something that I loved. Broadway was was the first experience with that. Uh, I was just trying to learn as much as I could and, and, and I was trying to absorb it all and experiencing those things and not knowing where it would lead. You know, you never know in this business. I mean, or any business. You just never know where, you know, one path is going to lead you. I was in the ensemble, one of the orphans in Annie. We were blessed with having Mike Nichols as, as our producer, who he is the one who, uh, I believe, saw me in the group of orphans and said, that's your girl right here. And I got the role overnight, just like that. And, um, you know, it changed the course of my life. Doing Sopranos was amazing and it was my acting school in very many ways and working with these incredibly talented people. But at the same time, I knew what my passion and my dream was. The only thing I ever dreamed about was being on Broadway. That was it. I made my Broadway debut as Belle in Beauty and the Beast, which was such a dream come true. I was on a tour of a Disney show called On the Record, and one of the producers at Disney said, you know, we're looking for a new Belle, and we would love to see you. And of course, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this, this is amazing. When I grew up, I wanted to be Belle. Actually, being able to play Belle was like, wow. I was Belle for eight months. I did eight shows a week. It was exhausting, it was tiring, it was amazing. I'll say that every single night, for the entire run that I did Beauty, there's the moment where Belle is revealed in her yellow dress, and without fail, every single night, it would hit me and I would get chills and just think, I did it. Since theater is live, if something goes wrong, you have to improvise. And things go wrong all the time. I literally forgot what show I was in, what character I was, and I quickly looked down, saw the blue dress, saw the white sleeve, and I was like, you're Belle. I thought, what do I do? What's my, what, what are my lyrics? I forgot everything. What felt like 10 minutes to me was probably about 30 seconds. There was one time where I freestyled an entire song in Beating the Beast. I made up all the words. In one of my first performances, the Beast's eyebrow came off. At the very end of the show, Gaston starts stabbing the Beast. Well, I went to grab the knife and it fell out of my hand. <laughs> So I just started slapping him. <laughs> Belle slaps Gaston, and as I did, this little four-year-old girl in the front row, she said, you go, girl. That was the end of that end scene. Beauty and the Beast played a big part in, in me discovering that, that music recording and being an artist was something that I wanted to do. There was this Christmas CD that, that um, the Broadway shows always put together every year. One year they, they asked me to sing a song on it, and so my dad and I said, what if we wrote a song, an original song, and sang it? And they said, that'd be great. And so we wrote this song called Joy of the World, A Christmas Prayer. First song I'd ever recorded in, in a studio and all that, and it's kind of funny, but uh, looking back on it now, but after that, that's kind of when all the, the recording music started, and that's when I realized that that's what I wanted to do. Those months of playing a lead on Broadway, living in New York on a day-to-day -day basis, doing eight shows a week, um, I think that aspect of it um, really prepared me for Mary Poppins. So I felt like I had really great stepping stones. It's a great experience to have the discipline to learn the lines, to, to learn the intentions of the character, and in fact, to then be in the moment as that character and, and, and let the creativity flow. 